I feel responsible. This is my duty as um, not only as a person of color, but as a, as a citizen of the earth. My philosophy is, is that we're supposed to help each other. <laughs> Welcome to Arts Engines. I am your host, Aaron Dworkin, and I am so excited for today's show, which was co-curated with one of our amazing creative partners, the University of Colorado Boulder's College of Music. Thank you so much for your partnership. And with us as today's guest, we have Joseph Conyers, who serves as assistant principal bassist of the Philadelphia Orchestra. He is on faculty at Juilliard, and he is also the founder and executive director of Project 440, which we are definitely going to talk about. And I would be remiss if I did not also share, he is a Sphinx Competition alum and a Medal of Excellence recipient. Joe, welcome to the show. Thank you so much, Aaron. I'm really happy to be here. Uh, well, it is obviously just a distinct pleasure and honor to be able to have you on the show. I'm so excited to be able to talk to you about a host of things, but especially the thought we just kind of start out about Project 440, right? So a lot of our audience are entrepreneurs or budding arts entrepreneurs. They may either be full-on professionals in the field, but thinking about a project or they may just be you know, leaving college or still in college or music school and thinking about a project. So first and foremost, can you just kind of share with all of us, what is Project 440? And then I'll ask you after that, how you actually got it started. But just first, what is it? Perfect, so I think most simply, Aaron, Project 440 is a music organization that doesn't teach music. <laughs> we use music as a tool to teach entrepreneurship, leadership and service, in high school students, as well as develop the college and career skills needed for success. We use music as a jumping off point, as a window um, uh, through which we can use to teach young people how literally to become the best of themselves possible and how to learn to look at their surroundings and figure out a way how they can contribute uh, for good for, for, for the world around them um, to make it a better place. <laughs> That is, it's just awesome and obviously very clearly needed. So can you give us an example, right? So if say someone's thinking about that and they're like, okay, wait, so you're using music to teach entrepreneurship or these other youth development skills. How, can you give us an example? What does that mean? Sure, so again, we, music is the, the kind of the conversation starter, if you will, with a lot of our young people. We are not genre specific, even though I am a classically trained <laughs> musician, it, 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 genre is not the point. It's actually, it's actually using music as a conversation starter to say, okay, I have this love, I have this gift. All right, I identified this gift. Now, how can I use that gift? How can I use that love to help others around me? In that process, Aaron, the students learn how to uh, put together a, a business plan. They learn about entrepreneurship. They learn about, they, they gain entrepreneurial skills. Uh, we run our own little um, shark tank, if you will, where students have to pitch ideas to industry professionals so that their ideas can then um, be put into their communities. We provide them with seed money to be able to do that. Through this process, the students work with each other, with other students from all around the city. They um, work with other organizations in the city because we connect them to different organizations. And all these students are learning about, oh, this is what it takes to make a difference. They actually learn these, these, they build this agency. And honestly, a lot of self-confidence because a lot of our students leave the program feeling empowered to make a difference, but also they feel they have the tools and skills needed to be successful in the path that they want for their lives. Wow, it just sounds extraordinary. <laughs> and so is there kind of a, um, kind of either a total breadth to the program or a breadth of impact. As you look at it, you're like, we're, we're reaching this many young people or this many students or we're helping this many projects. Is there, is there some kind of metrics that you look at um, for the program in its entirety? That's a great question, Aaron. So we are limited, honestly, in how many students we reach here in Philadelphia. Uh, we are, there's a, we can go a whole, there's a rabbit hole of all the possibilities that have come actually out of COVID. But in Philadelphia, the students uh, are paid for the program. So that's a point of equity. 
and um, but it's also a, a very, very uh, high line item in the budget. So, um, uh, but it's a point of equity because we don't want students, one, to be detoured because they um, are deterred because they have to contribute to their household income. So the students then learn, I mean, and what's great about it, they treat it as a job. So they know it's important and they, they, um, uh, uh, they show up. So it's, for us, it's really, really important that students have um, that kind of connection with the program. And because of that, we have not ventured out into this larger scale program. However, because of COVID, we are doing lots of online programs and we've actually started some virtual cohorts that are run through other organizations. So in that way, we are partnering and spreading this idea of using music as a tool to uplift young people. Because let me, I think this is really important. The, the goal is not music, Aaron. And I think sometimes as musicians, we get a little uh, uh, wrapped up into ourselves and wrapped up into our industry and say, we are gonna teach all these kids music and, and give them instruments. And that's all great and wonderful. However, I feel like sometimes in that process, we don't, um, we don't utilize music, music, music to its full capability. And um, I feel like as an industry, mu classical musicians do not use music <laughs> to its full capability. If we can start to focus on all these other wonderful aspects in a targeted, um, assessed, thoughtful way, I feel like we then are then creating a narrative on why every child must not should, but must have music in their life because it teach them, teaches them all these other skills. And because of that, we grow music education. Wow, oh, awesome. And I just love your passion, obviously, for the work that you do comes through so strongly, which I think is also a key skill set as it relates to entrepreneurship. Um, so, of course, right, this work is amazing and, 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 and incredibly impactful, uh, as you have shared, as we can feel from what you've shared. So, but you are literally in a leadership role in literally one of the best orchestras in the world. You are on faculty at literally one of the best, you know, arts music institutions in the world. Why start an organization, right? Why be an entrepreneur, right? So many people, it would be good enough to do just one of any of those things. Um, could you kind of just give us a sense of, of, of why all three, um, but especially why the entrepreneurship, why the need to feel like you needed to create something more separate from these amazing institutions that you're already a part of? Well, Aaron, I feel really strongly that with opportunity comes great responsibility. I, I do not, um, uh, uh, I'm not oblivious to the fact that as a, um, uh, a black man in classical music, I'm an anomaly on the stage uh, um, on, across any um, orchestra or chamber music society or anything like that across the country. And I find, I, have, I feel like I have the profound responsibility, not just for myself, but for all those who paved the way for me to be where I am. I'm not here because only solely because Joe Carnes wished myself to be here. <laughs> I'm here because of my parents. I'm, I'm here because of the, uh, their parents and their community um, uh, that, that allowed them to be, to, to reach those goals. And I feel really responsible, Aaron, that's the word. I mean, I, 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 I wish I could come up with something else that was maybe more, I don't know, but <laughs> I feel responsible. This is my duty as, um, not only as a person of color, but as a, as a citizen of the earth, my philosophy is, is that we're supposed to help each other. We are supposed to look for ways. And that's, I, if you want to find something that fuels my entrepreneurial spirit, that's it. It's, it's to inspire other people to help each other, to make the world better so that together we can succeed and together we can uh, achieve the things that we want, want to do. Uh, our industry can be very myopic about one singular person's success or one singular institution's success. But how, in that success, what, what's your responsibility, I would ask? What is the, uh, uh, particularly of those organizations, to your community? So that the value to your community is not just because you play great music, is because you are literally one of the cornerstones that helps pull the community together. That, to me, is a narrative, what is, a, is one we can win with, and when we can raise money on, uh, and, and, and honestly, it, 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 it provides value to who we are and what we do to the whole of our community and not just one constituency. 
Wow. No, it's I, I think you're so right. And you're and you're capturing that essence. And and of course, that aspect of your responsibility is so clearly impacting so many. Um, so obviously, you know, we're still caught up with, you know, um, issues related to the pandemic. Just curious, how has that impacted how you look at um, your role, but especially leading Project 440? Um, obviously, you've had to, you know, our industry speak pivot in certain ways. Um, but uh, what have you looked in terms, of, uh, in terms of changes that you've brought about because of the pandemic? Well, I, I guess maybe true to that entrepreneurial spirit, we saw it as an opportunity in our work. So uh, immediately, what was great about, <laughs> about all this is, I, a lot of people didn't know what Zoom was, but luckily we did <laughs> before the pandemic because of our great board of directors and uh, the fact that we were looking for ways to provide our programming for students who are part of, there's an alliance here in Philadelphia called the Philadelphia Music Alliance for Youth. We are a member of that alliance. Uh, it's a, a, a pipeline program for students of color to be in classical music. And um, in that, we want to be able to provide a program for students outside of, that, uh, of our immediate Philadelphia constituency. Well, what happened is when we went uh, online, we were like, well, if we, we can be online here, but we can be online technically everywhere. And long story short, we had a, a, a fantastic conversation with the folks of YOLA at the uh, LA Philharmonic, and we put together a partnership. We served 100 students from all across the country, from 16 states, and uh, over six weeks, we had a three day a week <laughs> program over six weeks. Um, and I don't know if we lost any students in the program, Aaron, because there was such a need and the students were so excited about connecting with other students who were just as interested about figuring out a way to use their music and their talents for good, even during a pandemic. So for us, it was actually a real opportunity. And from that, we actually have these little cohorts popping up all around the country. <laughs> so we had a strategic plan, Aaron, a whole strategic plan about how we could launch and go national and not realize that would happen in a matter of months instead of a matter of years. But you know, that's how it goes sometimes. <laughs> well, you know, I love how you described in true entrepreneurial fashion, how, you know, crisis is a potential opportunity and clearly you're realizing that. And, and I really think that's key. And, uh, and I think it's leaders like you who are gonna define this work and what our field looks like once we're past. Uh, this crisis. So, um, so unfortunately, we're running short on time, but I did want to just kind of ask, you know, you are so exciting to talk to, right? You are so passionate about what you do, and you are so positive and optimistic, yeah. right? And that I feel like I just feed, I know so many people around you feed off of that and are inspired by it. But where do you find inspiration? There must be times when you wake up or something happens with Project 440 or even at your orchestra or, you know, in the role teaching where, you know, something happens and you've got to overcome an obstacle or you feel like things might be too overwhelming. Where do you find your inspiration? Where, where do you find that sense of inner strength from? So I, there are probably lots of answers to that question, to be honest. Um, uh, one of the things I like to talk about is purpose. And I, I think one of the things that literally fuels my purpose, literally that does go back to the music because I am a musician. And uh, uh, I, love, I love music. I love the whole, I, mean, uh, I love classical music. I actually love gospel as well, <laughs> but it actually fuels my soul. That's one. The other thing, Aaron, is the opposite, I guess, of happiness is sadness or darkness or bleak. And uh, I think particularly in the world that we live in now, there can be a lot of that energy and you know what, Aaron? I just refuse to let it win. <laughs> I think that's what it is. I can't, I can't take it. At least not while I'm on this planet. I'm <laughs> I just refuse. I, I can't stand by and watch um, uh, uh, generations of young people not being provided the access and the resources they need to succeed. I'm not, I can't just go by. I can't go by and just kind of let things, things happen or focus on my own career and say, well, oh, that's, that's too bad. Others don't have, no, I'm going to look for a way to make a difference and make a change because if not me, Aaron Dworkin, then who? <laughs> and you yourself have done this and all the incredible work that you've done, not only through Sphinx, but all your incredible ventures. And you are an inspiration. And I think together, I mean, we have this arts engine together as entrepreneurs and those who are looking for ways to make a difference uh, uh, in the world through the arts and through music. 
together we we can fuel each other to not let that other side win joseph conyers thank you for your passion thank you for your talent thank you for the joy that you bring into the world you are truly one of the great arts engines that is powering human creativity and thank you for coming on the show my pleasure aaron